New details emerging about the suspect in the shooting deaths of 49 people at two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. The 28-year-old Australian man just made his first court appearance and he was charged with murder. Let's dig deeper with our correspondents and analysts. Uh, and, and, and I want to play a clip, Laura. This is the exchange the president had in the Oval Office uh, with a reporter on the increase of white supremacy, white nationalism, and the fear of t more terrorism. Listen to this. You see today white nationalism as a rising threat around the world. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. I guess if you look at what happened in New Zealand, perhaps that's a case. I don't know enough about it yet. They're just learning about the person and the people involved. Uh, but it's a, certainly a terrible thing, terrible thing. So he doesn't see white supremacy necessarily as a broader growing threat. Does that line up with what you're seeing, the statistics from the FBI, for example? Sadly, no. According to the FBI, there has been an uptick in hate crimes. I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 percent from 2016 to 2017. Now, not all of those are white nationalist hate crimes, but there's certainly been an uptick uh, in anti-Semitic crimes. And there's also been an uptick, according the, to the, the FBI. Right there, yeah. Exactly. And according to the FBI, there's also been an uptick in domestic terrorism. And those are hard cases to track. But we know of at least 900 open cases at the FBI. So there's clearly a problem here. And the question is, why doesn't the president want to recognize it on a day when 49 people are dead? You know, and, and Sean, the white nationalism, white supremacy, anti-Semitism, uh, hatred of immigrants, uh, Islamophobia, fu fueled all sorts of attacks, 49 people killed at two mosques in New Zealand today. But look at this, mass shootings uh, at houses of worship in the United States the past 10 years. August 5th, 2012, six killed at a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Uh, in June 2015, nine killed at the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. November 2017, 26 killed at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Spring, Texas. October of last year, 11 killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. These are so disturbing, yeah. these developments, these white supremacists killing all these wonderful people. Yeah, and it's clear and indisputable evidence that hate crimes are on the rise. And I think, you know, what the president has to realize is that the president's words tell you, they tell me, they tell the American people, and in this case, they tell law enforcement what his priorities are. And so when all the data tells us that hate mm -hmm. crimes are on the rise and that uh, these, these people are acting out in ways that are, that, are, that are atrocious, what he's telling law enforcement is that I don't believe it. And when he tells law enforcement that he doesn't believe it, then that has an uh, effect on, on their ability to protect us. And I, what I would hope in this case is that law enforcement leaders would, cut, would, would speak out and they would say that while the president doesn't see hate crimes as a priority, that the law enforcement community does, and the law enforcement community is going to do everything they, they, they can to bring these numbers what down. What do you think? I, 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 let me be blunt. The story is simpler, and that is uh, this will never happen, but I would suggest that you, you, one could go to the Bush library and to the Obama team and say how often on a weekly basis was President Bush and President Obama briefed on issues related to terrorism, including have the, having the FBI director at the table talking about white supremacism. And both of them, Bush and Obama, had frequent face-to-face -face meetings with the entire team, including both the CIA and the FBI. The White House will never say this. Nobody but my friends around having a beer would say this. But I guarantee you that if you compare Bush and Obama versus the number of times President, uh, President Trump has talked to his team about terrorism, it's night and day. He just doesn't know. That's the bottom line. He doesn't know what's going on in the country. Well, and the president actually said there that he didn't know a lot about the details about the shooter here. That's what he said after he was asked by that reporter about the riot, if he thinks this is a threat. Um, but it's interesting because right before the president spoke with those reporters, he had just gotten off the phone to the prime minister of New Zealand. So presumably he did speak to the leader of New Zealand where this attack happened about these details. Um, so it's interesting if he did not discuss what was going on because he was offering the U.S.'s assistance in all of this um, during that call with the world leader after a major terrorist attack. You know, what's so sad is that now all of a sudden... Uh, Muslim Americans that want to go to pray at a mosque, they get a little nervous. What's going to happen? They'll see in increased security outside. Jewish Americans, after the Tree of Life synagogue, they get nervous. They go to synagogue, they see increased security outside of synagogues. African American churches, all of a sudden people go with their families to church, they get a little bit nervous. It's so sad to see uh, the impact of this kind of terrorism. It is, and it's 
a national security threat. And I think that's part of the issue here is it's, it's not being treated by the commander in chief as a threat to national security. There are people who are dying and it's being sort of dismissed. And you have to wonder if part of the reason it's being dismissed is because there was so much talk this morning, especially about the gunman's manifesto, how he referenced the president. And every time this happens, you, you, you see the White House trying to distance themselves from any connection to the president, to the assailant. And you can't ignore that the president, when he's making those comments, is signing a veto opposing a measure that would reject his emergency declaration on something he thinks is a national security threat, which is the southern border. So that is something that's obviously important to the president.